We're flying from Cairo to Luxor. The modern city of Luxor has grown around the ancient city of Thebes. Thebes was a religious center from its earliest days and a capital of Egypt for a long period during the Middle and New Kingdoms. In 1500 BCE, it may have been the largest city in the world with a population of 75,000 people. Our journey back in time starts at the Karnak Temple Complex. It covers 247 acres, but only the Temple of Amun is open to the public, and it only covers 61 acres. The entrance is lined with ram-headed sphinxes and lots of tourists. This is the second most visited site in Egypt after the pyramids at Giza. The temple is noteworthy for its size and complexity. Construction started in the Middle Kingdom and continued into the Ptolemaic period, more than 2,000 years. Enter the Temple of Amun through the Avenue of Sphinxes. They symbolize the god Amun. A small effigy of Ramsay II in the form of Osiris is between their front paws. A feature of Egyptian temple architecture is the monumental tower gates called pylons. Ironically, the first pylon here was the last pylon to be built in 363 BCE, the same time as the enclosure wall was built. Passing through the first pylon, we are in the Great Court. Massive colonnades line the sides and more sphinxes. Dominating the Great Court is a statue of Ramses II. This massive column is the only one remaining of 10 60-foot tall papyrus columns in the kiosk of Teraka, built in 670. On the south side of the Great Court is a small temple built by Ramses III. Inscriptions inside show Ramses vanquishing his enemies while the god Amun looks on. This area is called the Open Air Museum. It's a collection of dressed stones with inscriptions that were used as rubble to fill pylons built by later pharaohs. This relief shows a pharaoh with the crown of the upper and lower Nile and the god Amun Re with his crown of two tall feathers. Some of the oldest structures at Karnak have been reconstructed here. This is the White Chapel, built by Senshuret I, who ruled from 1971 to 1926 BCE. In 1927, the disassembled pieces were found inside the third pylon. All along the base of the outer walls are a series of reliefs depicting the emblems and deities of the provinces of Egypt. The Chalcite Shrine of Amenhotep II dates to 1420 BCE and is decorated with finely cut sunk reliefs. The Red Chapel of Hatshepsut dates to 1462 BCE. Blocks from the chapel were discovered in the 1950s inside the walls of other structures. The Great Hypostyle Hall is one of the most impressive things at Karnak, and that's saying a lot. The roof of the hall, now fallen, was supported by 134 columns in 16 rows. The hall covers 54,000 square feet, making it the largest religious space in the world. It was built by Seti I, about 1250 BCE. Two rows of six columns line the center aisle and support a clear story roof. These columns are 66 feet tall. 122 shorter columns support two flat roofs. They're 46 feet tall. Amazingly, original paint can be seen in many places. Through the third and fourth pylon, at the end of the Temple of Amun, is the Festival Hall of Tutmus III. This hall was originally built to celebrate the said of Tutmus III, a festival of 30 years of his reign in 1449 BCE. 
The original paint shows 3,500 years wear, but the colors are still vivid inside the hall. At the back of the hall is the botanical room with accurate depictions of exotic flora and fauna that were encountered by Tutmus III on many foreign military campaigns. We're leaving the Temple of Amun proper and walking between the South Wall and the Sacred Pool, then through the pylons. The South Wall of the Temple is covered with deeply cut sunk reliefs, depicting Ramses II making offerings to various gods. The Sacred Pool was used for religious festivals and purification rituals. As we pass through the seventh pylon, built by Tutmus III about 1450 BCE, Salah tells us we are heading for something special. The eighth pylon was built before the seventh during the reign of Hatshepsut around 1470 BCE. And now for the something special. There are two temples that are off the tourist track and we'll get to see inside by special arrangement. First is the gate of Ptolemy III, dating to around 240 BCE. Enter the temple of Khonsu, the moon god. We enter a peristyle court, ordered by a portico of 28 columns in four groups. We pass through a doorway with richly carved reliefs. Then we enter the sanctuary with some of the best preserved decorations at Karnak. It leaves us breathless. Next door is the Temple of Opet. It's dedicated to the hippopotamus god. Opet was venerated as the helper of women in childbirth. In the hypostyle, the columns are topped with images of Hathor, the goddess of beauty, sensuality, music, dancing, and maternity. This was the last cult temple to be built at Karnak in 230 BCE. The Greek influence during the Ptolemaic period shows in the beautiful reliefs. Oped is depicted with a pregnant hippopotamus body and a crocodile head. We make our way back to the great court. Then we leave the temple complex via the Avenue of the Sphinxes. The avenue was built between 1500 and 370 BCE. Over 1,000 Sphinxes lined the 1.7 mile long processional from the Karnak Temple Complex to the Temple of Luxor, and that's where we're going next. It's golden hour as we arrive at Luxor Temple, where Sala lets us loose to capture as many pictures as we can. Luxor Temple was built around 1400 BCE. And today is through the pylon of Ramses II, which is fronted by six statues of Ramses II. And a single 80 foot tall obelisk. Its twin was given to France in 1830 and now stands in the Place de la Concorde in Paris. The two seated statues of Ramses II are 46 feet tall. The court of Ramses II is lined with a columnade of closed papyrus bud columns and more statues of Ramses II. Yet another statue of Ramses II as we leave the court and enter the colonnade. The colonnade leads to the court of Amenhotep III with double pairs of papyrus columns on three sides. On the fourth side is a hypostyle hall with 32 papyrus columns in four rows of eight columns. The back wall has some very nice reliefs. Couldn't pass up these temple cats. The light is starting to fade, so we have a few more pictures as we head back through the temple.
This is the Abu Haggag, an active mosque located in the court of Ramses II. The Romans converted this part of the temple to a church in 395 CE, and it then became a mosque in 640, which is more than 3,400 years of continuous religious worship. We meet Salah at the snack bar and have some refreshments as the sun sets behind Luxor Temple. But we're not done here yet. The temple lights up. And we set out so Salah can show us what we missed, like the Luxor end of the Avenue of the Sphinxes. The statues stand out from their backgrounds. The reliefs are more defined. Sala points out the painted faces on the wall at the rear of the hypostyle hall. This area was turned into a church by the Romans. It's time to leave Luxor Temple. Back at our hotel, we fall into bed. It'll be a short night. <laughs>